Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to The Coach Approach. It's your coach, Blake of the Black Baker, and today, 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 we're gonna be going over ADC, a beginner's guide to ADC. Now, there will be an advanced and an expert guide to AD carry located on my Patreon. If you guys haven't seen the big news video, there's gonna be a lot of content going to Patreon, a lot of content going to YouTube, and it's gonna be pretty much what's expected on Patreon and what's expected on YouTube. So if you guys have not seen that, from here on out, there's gonna be some changes, and I recommend you go see it. It's gonna be a short video, easy to watch, but without further ado, let's get it started into the actual game. So, guide ADC pretty much is what this video is going to be about. You're going to be learning what ADC is, what an ADC actually does, how to find the main for AD carry, um, and then mechanics needed for ADC, and then the last but not least, how to play early, mid, and late game as AD carry. As I said, these are not all the points to ADC. There will be an advanced and expert guide on that, uh, but... That's pretty much what we're going to be talking about today. So buckle your seat belts, whether you got this one or the one around your waist. You guys know what I'm talking about. And let's get on into the video. One more thing I want to say is that there are timestamps below. Because I know this is a long AF video. Uh, so there are time stamps below. Please feel free to click through and look at what you, you want to look at. I don't expect you guys to watch this entire video. It is long, although it took a lot of work. It is a very long video, but at the same time, I'm just trying to help you guys. So if you guys don't have a lot of time on your hands, this is what the time stamps are for. So you guys can get to the action and go on about your lives. All right, so what is ADC? ADC is one of the five roles in League of Legends. You have top. You have mid, you have jungle, you have support, and you have ADC. That's not the right order of the actual order, but the, <laughs> we got to AD carry, right? So you have ADC. ADC means attack, damage, carry, which means that anything that goes into that role should be AD. There are APCs, which are eight, uh, ability powered carries, but I'm not going to focus on that, and I'm not going to focus on like, like the Yasuo ADC or the Irelia ADC. We're just going to focus on the main uh, streamline AD carries, the marksmen, because why go through the trouble of learning the other stuff when you can just learn what works, okay? Um, and for those of you who play Senna and want to play Senna ADC, stop. All I'm going to say. All I'm going to say. Um, I'm not. I'm not... I don't like it. I don't I don't like Cine ADC. Back to the point. So what is ADC? ADC, like I said, is basically an attack, damage, carry. It's the carry of the team. It's the, 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 it's the actual role that does the most damage in the game uh, when it gets to a certain point of the game. But they do the most damage and the most consistent damage. A lot of champions might have a lot of damage, but they're burst damage. Or they're just held back by the fact they have to be in melee range. AD carries have a lot of sustained damage and they don't actually have to be in close proximity, which is why they're really, really good because they have that high damage, they have the high sustain um, of that damage, and then of course they have the range to keep themselves at a safe distance. So, what does AD carry actually even do? You know, what? why does that role matter? Fun fact, ADC is the most important role of the game. Without the ADC, it's very hard to take dragons, it's very hard to take barons, it's very hard to take um, towers, and inhibs efficiently. Without the AD carry, it's just very difficult to do, especially because there's such a large variety of champs within the other roles that sometimes they don't really do any damage to anything, and all that damage relies on that ADC in terms of that consistent damage. As we said before, you do have mid laners that are AP uh, champions or just like burst assassins, but they don't have the ability to always do damage because they have to get close or maybe their cooldowns are down, like just little stuff like that, that makes it so that they can't really fill that role of being able to take down dragons, barons, and towers and inhibs efficiently. So you are pretty much the main source of damage on your team. You are high value. Now you might be in solo queue or maybe normals, and it might not seem like that because maybe you're, you're dying so fast or like your team doesn't care to appeal you, um, but at the end of the day, if you have to match something else in damage at full build, like if you have to match, let's say, a top laner on like a dummy and an ADC on a dummy, you would realize that ADC actually does way more damage and more consistent damage than an actual top laner, even though you feel like you die way faster than those actual uh, champions. Now, a lot of your damage 
is based off how ahead you are, how behind you are, uh, how much gold you have, how much items you have. But for the most part, at the end of the day, you are the champ that does the most damage and the most consistent damage within these fights and taking these objectives. So pretty much, how do I figure out, how do I, how do I know what marksman is right for me? You know, How do I know which carry is right for me? Well, let's go through, we'll talk about it together and we'll figure it out together. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to the shop. You probably already have them bought, maybe you don't. But we wanna go to the shop and we wanna separate them out of marksmen. Now these will pretty much give you all the marksmen in the game. That does not mean they are all AD carries, okay? So if you're like, well, I'm not sure, well, can I play Azir? Another good way to figure out if it's an AD carry is go to an extern external site, like uh, op.gg or u.gg. I'll just pull up op.gg right now. So we go to op.gg, right? So we go to champions, boom. And now what op.gg does is you could pick the role and it will show you all the champions for that role now sometimes it is based off patch so maybe one champion is a jungler but they're not actually a jungler but for the patch everybody's playing them as jungle for an example echo he's a jungler but he's really a mid laner that's played in the jungle so maybe one patch nobody plays him in the jungle op.gg is going to say he's not a jungler but for bot lane so for adc the marksmen are pretty much always played bot so you don't really ever have to worry about that so we click bot boom these are the 80 carries that we have all right and as you see there's sometimes swain seraphine they're not really 80 carries they're ap carries and as i said we're not focusing on that right now so aphelios right this guy pretty and if you want to learn more click the champ and click learn more you can see their abilities and their overview about how they are stuff like that but for the most part, I'm just going to do a brief overview. I'm not going to talk about everything. But Aphelios has five weapons, which means that each weapon is basically going to be one of those, which one is better for the situation. Hence why you need to have better game knowledge. Would I use Aphelios as an entry-level ADC? No, I would not use Aphelios as an entry-level ADC. He is too difficult uh, to play. I would definitely wait until you understand the game a little bit more before you play Aphelios. Does that mean you can't try him out? No, by all means try him out. Maybe you like him a lot. It's just to excel at this champion, you're going to have to know a lot about the game. You're going to have to know a lot about the champions that you face. You're going to have to know a lot about trading. Like There's just a lot you have to know about him, and he doesn't really hold your hand. The next champion right here that we have is Samira. So Samira, one of the newer AD carries that we have, she pretty much is your uh, melee and range type of AD carry. If you've ever played Devil May Cry, um, or maybe you've played, that's the only thing I can think of, honestly. Um, she's a range and a, a melee ADC, which means she can go in whenever she wants to, but she can also sit back, hang back, and do some damage from the range. So if you're one that likes to be a little bit more closer to the action, likes to be actually in the face, likes to have those smooth moves, stylish type of plays, this is a chance for you. Ironically, her ultimate is pretty much based off how stylish you are. So I mean, if you like the fancy schmancy type of stuff, Samira is one of the most fanciest AD carries you will ever see in a game. And any play that you do, no matter if it's minor or major, will look awesome. So uh, very high damage, very high burst potential, but requires a lot of game knowledge in the sense of you need to know when you can get close and when you can't get close. And once you figure out the balance between getting close and you know being out of range, that's how you know you mastered Samira. Next, we have Kaisa, one of the more popular AD carries because she has so much in her kit. She has tank shred. She has... Um, invisibility she has an ability that lets her shield herself also repositioning herself meaning she's able to dash to a certain spot like she's very very strong and a sense of her kit is really really good so how would i know if i would like kaisa well kaisa is another short range ad carry but you don't really have to get to melee range she's just not that long of range she's pretty decent at her range um something about kaisa you would want to figure out if, if you'd like the player is uh how, how much do I really enjoy this type of champion? How much do I really enjoy like the alien type of champions? Like I like the champions that, that deal with plasma and stuff like that. Like I, I like that type of stuff. I usually like the plasma guns and things like that. Then this champ would be for you. She's very good when it comes to actually playing the role, but also she has that little niche of she's a void champion, meaning that she does come from that area that has plasma and that area that is like full of aliens and things like that. Like that's what she's about. So if you like aliens, you know, if you if you like creatures and stuff like that, Kaisa's for you. And also I think she is a, be a very beginner friendly champion because she is so good. Her kit is very nice. 
The downside of Kaisa is you do have to know how to use her abilities properly. So let me rephrase. She's very good at entry level, but she has a really high skill ceiling, which means that if the better you get at her, the more you can get out of her. Does that make sense? So as I said, very solid ADC to try, very solid um, commitment to her. And like as of style or as of character, she's very much on that alien side, that, 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 uh, that plasma side. Um, you'll, you'll hear all those like plasma sounds and stuff like that. Zaya, she's special. So <laughs> Zaya, pretty decent ADC, not gonna lie. Um, the thing about Zaya is she deals a lot with her feathers. She deals a lot with placing something on the ground and then using them to her advantage. So one of her main abilities is her E. As you see, she pulls the feathers back. That's pretty much how she plays. You're playing around the fact that you're placing stuff on the ground and pulling them back through your enemies. So if that's something that you're you're interested in, feel free to try to try her out. Now, every champion, every ADC has a basic element to them, and that basic element is auto attacking. So every champion that is an AD carry are gonna have similar aspects of auto attacking. So you can technically flip through different AD carries and still kind of have that sense of I know how to play you. There is just different aspects to them that make them different as i said she places stuff down and she pulls them back um it's all about placement of those feathers so if you're someone who likes to be methodical about uh tricking someone to go where they to go where they you know basically maneuvering them to go where you want them to go like i'm gonna put my feathers over there so that makes you move over here and that'll give me a nice combo like something like that um then Zaya's probably the champ for you she's also very very good with self peel um so that is pretty much how she plays. If you're one that not, doesn't really care about, you know, the placement of stuff and you don't want to have to think about all that, and you don't want to have to manage that on top of like other things, then then I, I wouldn't recommend playing her. But if that is something that you're into, her feathers are basically daggers. So just kind of think about she's an ADK that throws daggers. Okay. Next one is going to be, I probably should rate these based off beginner's level, right? Samira, I wouldn't really say she's a beginner level, beginner friendly. She definitely requires that game knowledge for that balance. Aphilios, like I said, not beginner friendly. Kaisa's beginner friendly. Uh, Zaya's, she is beginner friendly. You just gotta get used to that mechanic. So go to like practice tool and just practice the, the pool thing and you, you would get used to her. Jin, now he's a very special ADC. I actually like him the most. No, I like Aphilios the most. But Jin's a special AD carry in a sense of he's, got something no one else really has the way that he plays is very differently uh very different so he uses a pistol and he uses a sniper this pistol is his main weapon and when he ults it's a sniper he's a very long range carry with succession of being able to do things from a distance um when he's using his pistol of course well you know it's not When he's using his pistol, of course, you know, it's not that long range, but for the most part, he's a champion that requires you to reload. He is a champion that really only uses four shots and then he has to reload, but on that fourth shot, it is always a crit and it does percent HP damage. So he's more of like, I wanna blow you up type of carry. He's more of that, I wanna get you to a point where I can just snap my fingers and you're gone. That's what type of champion Jin is. And he is very, very good. He's very beginner friendly. He requires a lit a little bit of like I gotta get used to you because he's so different from the other AD carries, but he is very beginner friendly and he is very, very strong. I do recommend trying him out. Um he is more of the as I said, traditional like reload type of uh gunner. You know what I mean? Like so if, if you're more of like I, I like to just be realistic on the side of weapons. He's the closest thing to being realistic. As I said, he uses a pistol and a sniper and he has to reload. Um, and like I said, he's more about blowing you up. He's more about like, I just wanna snap and you're dead. Like that's the type of champion Jin is. If that's what you flavor, then that's a guy to try. All right, Kendra's not an ADC, but next we have Kalista. Kalista is definitely not beginner friendly. Um, I don't even think she's advanced friendly. I think she's expert friendly. So <laughs> the thing about Kalista is she deals with spears. Everything that she does, she deals with spears. I should probably highlight the main mechanic of these champions. So as you see, she tosses spears into you and then she uses something called Rin, which basically pulls them out. And when she does that, she basically pops you. She basically kills you. 
The thing about Callista is that it takes a lot of knowledge to know when your E, like when your Rin, is able to actually kill a target. And it's very, very difficult to know that if you don't play the game. You know what I mean? It's very difficult. You need to know how much her stuff does, and you also need to know how much damage other champions take in order for you to use her properly. Also, her passive makes her not like any other AD carry. You need to hop around. You don't just walk. Um, wait, did they not show it? No way. They have to show it, right? I would hope they show it. But you you, you have to basically hop around when you auto attack. So you throw, you hop. You throw, you hop. Um, oh, it's right here. So you see, she doesn't walk. So you have to do a lot of mechanical clicking. And she's very complicated. Is she good? She's as good as a player. You cannot whip her out and be like, I'm good. Like, that's not happening with that champion. She's not beginner friendly, as I said. She's very very hard to play but if you do want to challenge yourself if you do want to get yourself in that situation where like i i, I want to i want to be tough you know i, I want to be that one that gets the master champ that nobody really plays because of the high skill ceiling that she has do i want to be that person then this is a champ for you as i said understand the game first though um her whole kit revolves around spears and just dancing around dancing around making you hard to hit like where am i at where am i going more like a boxing style that's how that's how Callista is. So if you you really want to be like that hard to hit, that smooth, you know, bouncing around, um, she's the one for you. As I said, she's just very hard to deal with that that Rin mechanic with her spears and then just obviously the placement of how you're hopping. But she is very, very good when it comes to bobbing and weaving. So if that's something that you like in a champion or a character where you want to be hard to hit, Callista is the one for you. All right, next we have Jinx. The loose cannon. All right, so Jinx is typical, pretty much turret eighty carry. She's one of those carries that you just sit there and shoot. There's nothing. There's really not much to her. She has uh, traps that she puts down and she snares them so that it, it basically means they can't move. Um, as you see here, but she's pretty much your traditional legit marksman. Like that, that's one of the closest like marksmen you can get to just being. I don't want to say bland because she's not, but basic. Um, the only thing that makes her different than a lot of ADCs in terms of her own her own uh, flavor, I guess you could say, is the fact that her ult can hit across the map. So if you see someone low or something like that, you can use your ult and you can snipe across the map and successfully get a kill. But for the most part, pretty much simple. She uses a Gatling gun and she also uses rockets. The Gatling gun is pretty much as you see here, just the, the regular gats um, of the bullets. And then when she swaps to a rocket, she actually gets further range. She, she increases her range with swapping to that rocket and she can hit multiple enemies. So as I said, not really much to her. She's pretty beginner friendly. She's very easy and she's pretty basic. And it's something that if, you, if you're really like, I don't really know where to start. I don't really know how to step in. She's probably a very good choice in terms of uh, what she provides and just what she does. All right, Lucian, the purifier. Uh, some people say Lucian. I say Lucian. And I think his wife says Lucian. So <laughs> I think it's Lucian. <laughs> um, with, with that effect, my bad. That was, I'm sorry. His wife is Sinna, if you guys didn't know. But I'm pretty sure. I, most of y'all know. But anyway, Lucian is more of a gunslinger. Lucian's more of that, I got two pistols, where you at? That's pretty much how he is. Um, his guns aren't usually using bullets, though. They're more like lasers, unless you have a skin. There's one specific skin that he uses that actually shoots bullets. I think it's his High Noon skin. That's one of the skins that I prefer. I prefer his High Noon skin because I like the fact that he shoots bullets. Uh, where is it? Oh, this one. So that's the one where he actually shoots bullets. But for the most part, he's shooting lasers. Now, that obviously shouldn't be the reason you choose Lucian is because he shoots lasers or bullets or whatever. Like I said, he's just a traditional gunslinger. He's that one that uses two pistols. I mean, there's really nothing more to him. If that's something that you like, if you like the fact that I can use two pistols, um, he has a dash as well. He's very good at chasing and kiting. Once again, more of that bobber, bob and weave style, but not that hard. Callista that has that bob and weave style, but she's very difficult. Lucian has that bob and weave style and very quick movements and um, you know quick shots and stuff like that. 
but he's not as hard as she is. So if that's something like an entry level where you want to, I want to be that bob and weave and I like having the pistols and, you know, then Lucian's the one for you. He's also just a very strong early ADC. So if, if you like to have a lot of power and not really like to wait until later to be strong, Lucian's the one for you as well. All right, so Quinn's not an AD carry. She's a top laner. You can play her as ADC, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just a Quinn main. Uh, if you are a Quinn main, you wouldn't be here, I guess. Jace, I mean, not an AD carry. Uh, Draven, all right, so Draven, 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 Draven. Everybody loves a good Draven. Draven's one of those champions that are, I would say, very difficult to play as well, but once you get him down, he's not really that hard to play. He's hard to play because you have to learn how to catch his axes. Once you learn how to catch his, catch his axes, then he's just very easy to play. He's a very strong ADC early, um, and he remains that strong throughout the game as long as you don't fall behind. So he's a very high risk, high reward type champion. Um, but his whole kit, like I said, revolves around axes. It revolves around you catching, uh, throwing, moving, catching, throwing, moving, catching, throwing, moving, catching. That's pretty much how Draven works. If that's something that just doesn't seem that fun to you, where I have to like throw something and then catch it and then throw it and then catch it, that's just, that's too much work. Like if that's too much work for you, then by all means, don't play him. Um, but I'm not really classifying these champs on good or bad. I'm just classifying them as what they do to help you get a better understanding of how they play. Now, this isn't a full in-depth about the champion. That might be another video entirely when I actually do guides on these champions. But this is just going to be a brief, like I said, overview of just everything. So you guys can get a taste of what everything does and how they play and stuff like that. He's a very early game champion, but his whole kit, like I said, revolves around just catching those axes. And it's very... Very difficult to get into and start learning, especially if you were never played any type of marksman ever. That's not the one that start, that's not the one that you want to start out with. Uh, but his attitude's very nice. He's very cocky. He's very showboaty, which I which I like. But once again, he's just probably not the one for you if you are um, new to the whole marksman thing. All right, Varus. So Varus, he's kind of difficult because he's one of those champs that are. I don't. Varus is one of those champions that are just everywhere. He's like a, he's like a mess. He's like bleh. you know that's what type of champion he is. he's like literally a mess. He has Q. He's like a snipe shot, but he's an auto attack AD carry, which he's just everywhere. The best thing I can say is you're playing pretty much off of his passive called Blight. I think it's called Blight. Nope, it's called Living Vigilance. Something's called Blight. Oh, it is Blight. I'm trolling. So <laughs> you're pretty much playing off the stacks. As you see, each auto attack, you get one of them. If you can mark someone with three, then you use your E or your Q, whatever you decide to use, and you pop it. Now, as I said before, he's very awkward because sometimes people don't go that build, and he just starts firing Qs for heavy poke damage, as you see uh, right here. He, he can be used to just be a very poke-heavy champ. So he's very awkward all over the place. It can be played two styles. I like to shoot from long range and poke you down before the fight even starts, or I like to be that AD carry that just, you know, a typical like shot, 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 AD carry kind of like Jinx, and uh, you just kind of go with that. Like, he's, he's a mess, and those of you that play Varus or like no Varus, he's very all over the place, as you guys could probably tell, but like that's the best thing I can give you. He's pretty much just an archer um, that can either just build poke wise where he would shoot you from far away or he would just, you know, be a rapid fire archer where you're just always shooting. Like if that's something that interests you, if you like archers, then by all means pick him. But there is Ash. We haven't got to her yet, but she's pretty much an archer as well. He is just all over the place in a special kind of archer. So I would recommend trying him just to see how he is. But if you have to buy him, I would probably steer clear because he's a mess and you may not like him. He is a very... Uh, I only like this type of champion type of thing. He's not something that's everybody's cup of tea. So I wouldn't recommend just purchasing him unless you have your refund. Graves, not an ADC. Uh, Vayne, okay. Vayne, Vayne, Vayne. So Vayne is one of those carries that is a playmaker. You know, she, she's very good at being all over the place. She requires mechanics. She's not an AD carry that you can just kind of chill on. You need to know how to play her. Kind of like Callista. You need to have the mechanics to be able to play her. But Vayne's easier. So with that in mind, she's a very good tank shredder, and people usually play her because of that. But also, 
She can reposition by using stealth, but for the most part, people usually just play her because of that tank shredder, tank shred effect and the fact that she can just kind of maneuver about um, when she rolls around and stuff. You know, she's that, she's that, she's that marksman that's mixed with that bob and weave style, but hits very, very, very hard late into the game. She's not that strong early. She's pretty weak early unless you get some kills. So don't think that you're going to be doing massive damage like Lucian. But for the most part, later into the game, she's one of the strongest that he carries. So if you like to, you know, play safe and you like to be the playmaker later into the game, we're like, I'm the reason why we win this game. I'm the carry. This is the one for you, guarantee. Um, Kaisa kind of is too, not going to lie, but she has a lot more options than Vayne. Vayne's a little bit more straightforward than Kaisa. So maybe if you want to like entry level with Vayne and then shoot to Kaisa, that'd probably be the go. But... Do I think she's a beginner friendly champion? Yeah, I think she's fairly easy. I think she doesn't require much game knowledge and she's just very forgiving because if you do fall behind, you just get stronger later. That's one of the reasons why I like late game champions because you don't have to play perfectly to do well. You just get very, very strongly into the game. Um, and as I said, she's a tank shredder. So even if there are no tanks, she's, she's blowing up people. And when there are tanks, she can handle them pretty easily. So if that's what you're into, the tank shred, um, the repositioning, the, the, the playmaker late game, this is the one for you. All right, next we have Corky. Now, he's not really played as an AD carry, um, but pretty much he's your typical, just like fighter airplane type of champion. Uh, the way that he plays is similar to that. He's pretty much just like a fighter airplane. Um, he needs a rework, really, I think, but... I don't know. There's not much to him, honestly. And if you want to know how to get here, you just go to the shop and then click learn more. I think I said that already, but yeah. Um, he's very, he's one of those like the same thing, like Varus, Black. It's like, you don't really like Corky unless you like Corky. Like you, you have to like him to play him. It's not like one of those, I could just whip him out and boom, I like, boom, I'm doing good. You have to really like the champion. So is he beginner friendly? Yes. But he might not be your cup of tea. I wouldn't waste money buying him because he's not really liked by a lot of players. So up to you how you want to do that. Uh, for the most part, though, like I said, he plays like a fighter airplane. He has tank shred as well. But for the most part, you're, you're just better options. That's all I'm going to say. If you like him, play him. You can win with anything. But I wouldn't waste it unless you know for sure like that's what you want. Um, Ezreal. So Ezreal, I don't... People call him Ezreal. People call him Ezreal. People call him... Uh, Israel, I, I call him Ezreal. So pretty much Ezreal is one of those carries that require all skill shots. If you feel like you are very good at like just hitting skill shots, hitting abilities, you want to be that guy that's like picking them off with poke damage. Like I said, kind of like Varus, where you're just throwing it out and you're just poking them and poking them, then Ezreal's the one for you. He's very skill shot reliant, but if you can land your skill shots, you look really, really good. He's also a safe AD carry. He does not get caught because of his E called Arcane Shift. As you see, it's basically basically like a free flash. So he's a very safe carry. He's very um, easy to play in terms of the difficulty, but he's very hard to play because of the skill shots. So if you can land skill shots, he's very easy. If you can't land skill shots, he'll be hard until you learn how to land skill shots, and then he'll become easy. He's very beginner friendly. I think you should try him, like I said, if you can land skill shots. If you're having a hard time landing skill shots, go to practice mode, try it out, uh, and then you can get better at your skill shots that way. But I think he is a very good one to just get your hands on. He is actually, I think, one of the most popular AD carries picked, even though he's not great right now. He's still one of the carries that people tend to flock to on every server. So he is definitely high, high, uh, he's very, very, very popular among all the AD carries. Next, we have Kog'Maw. So Kog'Maw, once again, is on that spectrum of you have to like Kog'Maw to play Kog'Maw. He's this tank shredder as well, um, which is kind of nice, honestly. I do like the tank shred aspect, but he is an alien and not a lot of people like aliens. He pretty much uses his uh, vomit, I guess is the best way to put it, um, to kill people. He uses his, his like acid vomit to kill people. And as I said, if you like that, by all means, but he's one of, once again like your traditional standstill shooting carry like Jinx. Pretty much you sit there and you just pop off. You have to obviously move around to like not die, but he's very successful just sitting there, which is why having a champ like Lulu, um, 
Sarah, like just things that keep him alive longer makes him stronger because he could just literally sit there shoot 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 and he does a ton of damage if you can actually like uh get away with doing that but that being said you have to like him to play him he's not one you can just whip out and you're good to go you really have to be able to like that kogma so if that's something that you would like if that's something that you want where it's like i can just pretty much sit there and be a turret he's another one for you but i would suggest you play jinx first over Kog'Maw, because Jinx, like I said, provides a little bit more than Kog'Maw, and then you can ease your way into him. He's not beginner friendly at all, so definitely make sure you try her before you try him. Miss Fortune. She's kind of classified as Gunslinger too. I think people like to call her, but I don't really see her as a Gunslinger champion. I see her more of as just like a, a champ with two pistols. <laughs> like, it's not really a Gunslinger, just a champ with two pistols. Um, the best part about Miss Fortune that people play her really for is her ultimate. This right here. So if you think that that is something that you like, you really love the fact that I can just sit here and uh, just ult the whole team like that, she's the one for you. She's very fast in terms of movement speed, and she does a lot of high damage with poking, um, pretty much bouncing her abilities off of another ability, or another like object. So if there's two champs together and you wanna hit that one in the back, you basically trick shot and you hit that one in the back. So she's very trick shot-esque in terms of how she's using her abilities. Like I said, if that's something that you like, you like being a little trick shot player and you like, like I said, just being able to mow them down with that spray like that, she's the one for you. She's very simple, very easy, and um, she's very unique as well. Not many champions pretty much do what she does. And so there's not much to say about her because she's one of those older champions. If you haven't noticed, the champions that are very, very old, I don't have much to say about them because they're old. They're, they're straightforward. You know, if you, like I said, if you like the trick shot and you like being able to mow them down, Miss Fortune's the one for you. Traditional ADC, very easy. And you probably already picked her up when you first started because I believe they have it so you can get a free champion and you can try Miss Fortune already. So you know what she does and you pretty much know how simple she really is uh, when she plays. She is a crazy team fight turner though, if you can land that ultimate. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, next we have Sivir. So Sivir is... <laughs> Once again, just, she's a straightforward AD carry. Um, she basically uses a boomerang. Um, I'm going to call it a boomerang. I mean, it says boomerang blade right there, but it's not really a boomerang, but I'm going to call it a boomerang. Um, I guess a boomerang is something you throw and come back, which is what her thing does, but it's not called the boomerang. Anyway, she pretty much is a traditional ADC as well with just a, uh, a long range Q. As you see right here, she chucks it and it goes forward and it comes back. So if you like being able to, once again, kind of do that trick shot where I get to, you know, throw something here, maybe I move and then it goes to come back through you and I can get a free kill like that. Like she's very position based based off her, her uh, Q. She also has a spell shield, which blocks any abilities incoming. So it's pretty cool too that you can block any ability in the game if you just press your E, it's pretty nuts. And then she has this movement speed boost for her entire team to help them engage and things like that. Once again, just kind of a pretty straightforward straightforward ADC. Nothing to write home about. Um, the only, like I said, thing cool about it in terms of like making her different is just the fact that she has that spell shield. Otherwise, you can pretty much play another champion and do what she does or maybe even what she does better. Next, we have Caitlyn. All right, so Caitlyn is one of those AD carries that pretty much plays around just, you know, incapacitating her. <laughs> This, wait, that's the wrong word. Incapacity. This is not the right word. I'm sorry, I've been recording for a while. Um, she's pretty much a champion that wants to immobilize whatever's coming after. She's very good at kiting and she's very, very hard to pin down. Um, she has a net that not only gets her away from targets, but also slows them. She also has traps so that if you walk into them, you're snared. She also has a long range sniper shot. So if you're far away and she can just snipe you with her ultimate, she gets a free kill. She also has a long range Q, which she can basically use to also snipe you. Like she's very, she's very good. Her kit is very solid. It's, and I like that. I like that her kit provides so much and it's also different from a lot of ADCs. If you're a champ, if you're a player that likes to just basically make people mad at you because you can never get to a Caitlyn if they play really really well she's the one for you she's very very good at like I said disengaging those fights keeping them at bay and also she gets extra damage for using the net on them and for using the traps on them so 
Very, very solid choice, especially versus all these champions that can get in your face and that can get to you really fast. She's the one to keep them away from you, to keep them at bay. I definitely recommend her. She's very beginner friendly. And once you get down with get once you get her down with her trap placement, best champion in the game. Uh, ADC kit by far. Now, obviously, her damage might not be the greatest right now in terms of uh, in terms of um, like patches and things like that. But her kit, I think, is one of the best kits for AD carries, aside from Kaisa. But Kaisa's kit, it isn't as it doesn't really keep people away from you. You know, it's a cool kit. Don't get me wrong, and you can do a lot with it. But it's not straightforward, and for you to actually use it properly, you have to know how to play it properly. You have to know how to play every situation properly. Caitlyn does not. You pop them traps down in a team fight. Good luck to someone getting to you. If they get close enough, you net, put some more traps down. <laughs> they can't get to you. It's actually the, the funniest thing you've ever seen if you can manage to do it. So I highly recommend playing Caitlyn because if you get really good at her, she's she's ridiculous. And also, she's the highest range AD carry in the game, aside from... Uh, Jinx in rocket mode uh, can match her range. And then, of course, Tristano, when she levels, which we'll talk about her uh, in a minute, when she levels up, her range gets longer and longer. But traditionally, Caitlyn is the longest range AD carry in the game. So she's the safest, not only with her range of autos, but like I said, with all the tools that she has to not only kill you from afar, but keep you away from her. Very, very solid ADC. Tristana. So Tristana is kind of nice because... I mean, she's actually one of the champs that's kind of her own. You know, she's one of those champs that does not have her kit replicated. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, she can jump into the fight if she wants to. Um, and then she can reset on a kill or just on her bomb blowing up, as you see right here. She throws it on him, hits it three times. Well, I guess four. And then it explodes. And then she gets that reset. So she can get the reset either way, getting a kill or blowing up that bomb. And she can just kind of hop around. Um, I think they call it the bunny hop. I'm not sure, but it's where she can just kind of re keep hopping on, hopping out, and hopping. Like she's very nice on that uh, in terms of being able to reposition just by hopping. I think she's a very fun character. Um, it's nice to also have her ult. If someone gets close to you, you not only push them back, but then you can hop away. So there's no way they can catch you. Plus, if you have flash, like they're not getting to you. Very, very nice ultimate. But she's more about just exploding. She's more about just a bam, 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 boom. And then hop away or hop to the next target so if it's something that you like where you like to eliminate go to the next eliminate go to the next um, or just make sure that you're able to eliminate and get out maybe hop in hop out she's very good at that now we talked about samira very good at being close range and and, and kind of being at a distance it's not the same it's not even i don't think really similar in the aspect because you can hop in with tristana and reset and get out you don't really have to know when to hop in because if you're able to really just jump and escape you're good to go. I think she's a very, another just beginner friendly champion. Very solid kit, very strong, very late game champion. Uh, once again, she, her kit's kind of just, it's an older kit, but I think it's very, very solid as well. Uh, worth a shot, worth a shot for sure. All right, next we have Twitch. All I'm gonna say is, if you, if you like surprising your enemies and killing them, plus poisoning them, that's the one for you. <laughs> He's the same. He's been the same since his release. He just got reworked in terms of looks. Um, but pretty much, that's how he's played. You want to be sneaky. You want to you wanna surprise people. You want to go invisible, come out, boom, I'm killing everybody. If that's what you want to do, that's the one for you. I don't really know what else to say. Sneaky, pop out, boom, you're dead. Sneaky, pop out, boom, you're dead. And he resets that off of kill. So if he kills somebody, he can go right back invisible. Um, very good champ right now, actually. And it's a very solid pick in terms of, like I said, you're able to be invisible. So if you want to go mid and get some free kills and then come back bot, by all means, you can. If you want to go cheese the jungler because you can walk in there and be invisible and then kill it, by all means, you can. Only downside is that when you get close, of course, you're spotted. As you see, there's a ring around him. When he gets close, the exclamation mark comes on his head, meaning that, hey, they can see me even though I am invisible. So you do have to watch about you watch out of that. But for the most part, pretty, pretty solid ADC. Um, worth a shot, worth a shot for sure, for sure. Not that difficult, beginner friendly as well. Definitely worth a shot. Next we have Ash. <laughs> I own her. This is my support account, but I own her. I think the only ADC that I own. So that's why she's in, towards the end, even though her name starts with A. Um, and on top of that, I guess she's one of the older champs too. So either way, she'd be at the bottom. But anyway, that's a different story for a different time. She's pretty much your typical archer. 
she's a typical archer that is able to slow players while she's auto attacking or while she every ability just slows a player except her e her e just sends out a hawk and you can see everything in the area it, it basically is like a ward but you can throw it it's pretty cool honestly and you can spot whatever is happening in the area that she threw it so it's really really awesome to have um her ult is kind of like jinx that we talked about where we, she can snipe from across the map if she really wants to Ezreal can do that too i didn't touch on that because it doesn't really make him but also you can toss his across the map as well but the cool thing about ash's ult is it stuns players the further you are away from the player the the stronger the stun is so if you can line a stun up from base all the way to their the, to their base or like maybe even in the middle of the lane um the middle of mid lane or like the middle of bot lane wherever you can actually have a stun for a really long time and you can just net free kills for your team if you can land it it's a really cool ability i don't recommend wasting it like that though but it's very nice to have as a for sure i can get someone off of me with the stun i love having the ability to slow players um she's very very beginner friendly she's very solid in terms of her kit there's no way there's no way anything about her kit is difficult very entry level I recommend solid kit as i said before what more can I say? You have the ability to stun and you have the ability to permanent slow. Everything you do slows. Every auto, every ability. Slow, 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 slow. So that's something you're interested in. You're interested in being able to not only keep them off of you, but chase them down because you're co constantly slowing them. Ash is the one for you. All right, all right. I don't like an ADC because she's not meant to be an ADC. And Riot even stated they don't want her to be an ADC. But people keep making her an AD carry. Everyone swears, coach, it's broken. Coach, it's strong. Ugh, I hate this champion. They never do well on my team. They always suck. Even on the enemy team, they suck. And they just win. That's all. It's just like, oh, my team carried me. Like, they don't ever perform well. But if you guys insist on making her an AD carry, if you guys insist on wanting to try her, you want to know what she's about. She is pretty much... A champion that gets her range extended based off of how many souls she picks up, as well as, I believe, crit, too. Um, there's like, oh my god, she's just, it's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. She's a support, and it's not worth it. She's pretty much, if we just explain Ash, she's pretty much Ash, you know? She's pretty much Ash mixed with Lucian. And in terms of... Her Q is like Lucian's Q, where you can pretty much Q off of anything. A ward, as long as it's a target, you can shoot, you can Q off of it. Uh, towers, wards, minions, your allies, enemy allies, you can trick shot it off like Misfortune um, and do that. Now, as far as her W, it's a snare. Like I said, kind of like Ash, where her ult's a stun. Her W is a snare, and it will AoE snare everybody around you, uh, kind of like that. And then, of course, you have her E, which hides everybody in it. And you can basically move around. Very good for like team engages or like team escapes because they can't see the people inside of it. They can only see Senna floating around. And then um, her ultimate is a very good snipe across the map as well as it's able to shield and heal. As I said, I don't see why you would want to play her. There's other champs that do things way better than her. But oh my god, the, the crack and build is so broken, bro. No. If you're taking it from a coach... Just play what's normal, especially because if it is broken, it's going to get nerfed. And if it does get nerfed, you're going to be in hot water because you're not going to know what to play or how to play because you've been spamming this champion. I don't see success on it. Just just, just don't play Sin AD. You see, play, play. Okay, but I think that pretty much clears it up for all the AD carries. As I said, it's just a brief overview. I probably missed some things. You're like, but this champ can do this. This champ can do that. I'm not really concerned about the in-depth until I make guides, okay? So as far as just a brief overview of everything, that's what you have. All right, so right now we're about to go through pretty much the basics of AD carry. What mechanics do you actually need to play AD carry? So a lot of people uh, say there's a lot more mechanics to ADC, um, which th 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 there are, but it's not one of those roles where you have to be a god at mechanics. A lot of people think, well, I have to be really, really good at mechanics to play AD carry. Some champs just don't have mechanics really. Like Ash is one of those champs where you just click and you shoot. What mechanics do you need other than the click and shoot? That's nothing, right? So um, what do I mean by just basic mechanics? Mechanics basically like, um, uh, let's go ahead and put a little bit more dummy. So I actually made a video about this a long time ago on my other channel, but obviously this is a new channel, so it's not on this one. But one of the things that you're gonna need to learn when you play AD carry um, is of course, last hitting, right? And that's part of, uh, just kind of learning how to CS with them. So let's just, well, we're going to leave that there and we're just going to fast forward this. A couple seconds. 
All right, so you get the lane, minions get in the lane. How do we last it? Well, a lot of times what you will see players do when they start playing League of Legends, especially when they start playing AD Carry, is this. They'll just do this, um, and then they'll go like this. Right? And as you see, I got it, but if we keep doing that, when I don't want to get CS, I, mi I get CS. When I do, I miss. But pretty much what I mean, what is this doing? Well, first of all, you're messing up the wave. This is something called wave management, which we will touch in the advanced guide of ADC. But also, it's making you have it so you can just end up missing the CS. So what you want to do is you want to wait for it to get low, and then you want to auto. That way it doesn't shove your wave, but it also allows you to have more, um, more control over you getting your CS. Because if I'm constantly hitting it, and it gets to a point where I'm, it's getting low and I can't... Uh, it's getting low and I can't actually see us because it's too low. I'm because I'm basically reloading. You know what I mean? Like I'm in, in the process of getting another auto attack out, kind of like that. You see, I miss. But if I would have waited, I could have got it. So if you want to get, if you want to push, you know, get it low, and then hit it when it's low, and you can get your CS that way. As I said, when I want CS, I don't get it. But that's pretty much what you want to do, and that's pretty much the mechanic of CSing, and that goes for every single lane. You want to make sure that you, it gets low first, and then you just auto. Now, something that one student brought up to me when I was coaching them, they were like, well, do you get auto, the autos come out faster if you're close? Because this has travel time, you see? But if I'm closer, it doesn't have travel time, so do I get the auto faster? No, it's the same. It will always be the same. Whether you're uh, close or not, it's always the same amount of uh, attack, attack speed. So you don't need to be closer to do more attack speed. That doesn't work. Um, if it does work, Right, you guys do you got some work to do, but um, it doesn't work like that. Another thing you want to kind of have as an AD carry in terms of mechanic is something called kiting. So, how does kiting work? Well, kiting pretty much means that if something's chasing you, you're able to kite backwards. So, for an example, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna act like this is us kiting like a champion, okay. So look, they're coming at us, I'm kiting, right? I'm kiting, I'm kiting. Pretty much you, you click, you walk back, you click, you walk back, and they can't hit you. That's pretty much what kiting is. So a good tool to have if you're like, I'm not really solid on my clicking, is you can use A click. What does A click do? A click is when you press A and you left click, you're actually able to shoot whatever. You see my cursor's down here? You can actually shoot what's closest to the champion. See? So I don't have to do click, click, move, click, move, click, move. I could just move and then like click whatever's closer now obviously you want to try to have your cursor as close as possible because if there's multiple targets and you're just clicking down she's going to shoot whatever is closer to her and that might, not, that might not be what you want so you want to try to click you know towards the champion so that way you can actually hit it that's a good way to kind of get used to kiting without actually having to click because sometimes especially when you're new you're, you're playing lock screen and when your screen moves so does your cursor pretty much and you and it's kind of hard to like always click because now Instead of the monster or the dummy, I'm sorry, the dummy being uh, here where it was, now it's in the middle. And if I walk, now it's way over here. You know what I mean? So it's very hard to actually always hit your target if you're moving, they're moving, and your camera's moving. So it's just a way to kind of just have it so that you're never going to really miss if you are doing that. So an exercise for kiting. How can I get better at kiting? An exercise for kiting will be something that I like to call, um, I don't think I actually have a name for it. <laughs> Maybe I call it the rope dope No, I don't have a name for it. Uh, but pretty much what you do is you want to start at the bottom, line up three. You can line up four too. If, you, if you're like, hey, I'm feeling fancy, line up four. Doesn't matter. Line up four and go ahead and then just walk, click, walk, click, and just do that. As I said, if you want, you use a click, a click, and just walk. Walk with it. Walk with it. Okay. Right? Pretty, pretty simple. And then go back down. Do the same thing. If you want to do un unlock camera, you can do unlock camera, right? Same thing. Same thing. Look, 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 how, look how easy that is. Nice and paced. Nice and paced. Easy, easy. Um, and then if you want to get a little bit more fancy, right? Because this is really telling you how to go, uh, I guess, diagonal. You can go like this, right? You can, you can go up and down. Right? Put that in. Up and down. Right? Go up and down. Ooh. Yeah, just, just simple. Just simple. Right? Now, if you want to get really fancy with it, what I suggest, and this is just kind of a way to get used to maneuvering as you're uh, kiting, is you can go ahead and just try to like wrap yourself around all of them. It's very hard to do, of course, 
but wrap yourself around wrap yourself around and the slower your attack speed is the harder it is for you to actually kite in terms of uh in terms of canceling your auto attack because if i click too fast you see how i canceled it right so instead of an auto 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 i'm autoing and i'm canceling and, and she's just she's just having a hard time you have to know okay my ability came out the timing of the ability that way you can get more da damage out because it's always shooting as soon as you stop instead of like stopping too early and you can't do nothing but sit there and you're struggling so you really got to make sure that you're timing it properly as i said the more attacks speed you get the harder it gets um i mean the easier it gets in terms of being able to kite but the problem is when you get too much attack speed it becomes an issue so we're not going to get too much attack speed here we're just going to get uh just a little bit um i guess phantom dance is probably the best play oh, i can't buy two of phantom dancers you used to buy a lot i guess you can't really buy a lot of anything anymore um wrong one tech speed so we'll just get these all right so these are, should be enough um but there we go all right so as you see my attack speed is higher as you can tell down here too attack speed is higher so you, you see it's a lot easier to kind of add that click in right way easier you can kind of step through and now the problem with this is like if i'm doing this constantly you notice i'm not really going anywhere right so if i'm kiting somebody and all i'm doing is this i'm not really moving I'm staying in the same spot. So you're going to want to have to time it a little better where it's like, even though you can attack more, it might not be the best play. You might want to still space out your autos so you can gain some distance because all the time, especially with Jinx, she just goes too quickly and you don't really move anywhere. And this isn't really kiting. This is just kind of, maybe it's orb walking. I don't know. I don't really name it. Uh, but this is nothing, right? Unless you're in front of them, you're going to want to still space it out no matter how fast your attack speed is. So that way you can actually gain distance from it. Right, as you see, if I attack dragon, I can actually move backwards instead of like doing this. You see, I'm still getting hit by it. I'm not really going anywhere. Like I'm still getting hit. So all about timing pretty much is what kiting is all about. I recommend you just go into practice tool and just do this, get that little practice going on and uh, you'll be good to go. And last but not least, how does an AD carry play early, mid and late game? Well, when you spawn, of course, just like everybody else, you got to pretty much be going to lane and just doing the basics, right? We're just CSing, kind of how we discussed earlier. Um, we, we might be trading a little bit. As I said, we'll be uh, explaining more in the advanced guide about how to trade, when to trade, and stuff like that. So if you are interested in that, remember, make sure you join my Patreon. We will be doing more uh, videos excuse me, and guides like that about uh, the role. Um, and then also rotations, you know, you know, we, sometimes we have to rotate up the jungle. Maybe we don't need to rotate. But for the most part, the early phases of the game are going to be just you and farming and playing your lane properly uh, and rotating from time to time. Now, how do we play the mid game? Well, mid game's a little different. After the towers break, whether it's yours, the enemies, whatever, you start going into mid game. Mid game is usually started around the time that uh, towers break, as I said before. So how do we play that part? How do, how do we play mid game? Well, the best way to do it is to focus on dragons, barons, rip, you know, all the objectives. That's what you want to focus on is you want to focus on the, the things that are neutral, the things that actually make it so that we can enhance our power. Um, of course, towers are very good, but those aren't really neutral. You know, those aren't neutral objectives. Neutral objectives are basically objectives that both teams can get um, and it's in the middle of the map. So like I said, the dragons, the rift heralds, the barons, those are what you're focusing on. And then just regular objectives are like towers, in inhibitors, things like that. So the best way to get the towers and inhibitors are pretty much playing around the neutrals. And that's when the mid game is usually when you see the more of the scraps, the more of the 3v3s, maybe the 44s, but not full on 5v5s. It's just like, okay, well, I have my lead. I need to use it. Let's go ahead and make some stuff happen around the map. We're walking around the map. We're traversing the map together. Late game, that's when everybody has their items and you have to basically play team fights really, really well. These are usually the point where 5v5s happen. Maybe they don't, maybe your games don't get that far, but late game is generally where everybody has their items. And now it's just a point of, who can play team fights better and who can play around the right objective better so in a sense how you would play late game is you would pretty much wait for your team to engage wait for your team to do anything um mid game is kind of like that as well but there are opportunities where you can just get kills for free because you maybe outplay something because they're scattered and stuff but late game they're not usually scattered they're more together 
in terms of how they play, which means that you don't really have a lot of authority on how fights start and stuff like that. Or, you know, uh, you, you have a lot of agency on how it ends, but you don't really, you can't start it yourself because you're going to end up getting caught out and you're going to end up dying. That is the move, that mid to late game, like the transition between those two are the most important times for AD carries to stay alive. So if you find that you're dying a lot in mid to late game, then you're going to need to be taking a look at yourself and thinking, why? Champions aren't the reason why you're dying. You're dying because you might be mispositioning, or maybe you went to a fight that you shouldn't have went to, or maybe you joined the fight too late, but you're, want, you're going to want to be part of a lot of these fights. You're going to want to be a part of this, because as I said before, you are the main you are the main like source of damage. You, you are the most important role in the game when it gets to this point where it's mid game and when it's late game. So you wanna make sure that you are a part of almost everything if you can, if you wanna have the higher success. So let's recap here. Early game, I'm just farming, doing my thing. Maybe I need to rotate. Maybe I need to get some dragons with my jungler sometimes, but I'm just farming, being safe, going for some trades, doing my thing. Um, mid game. This is where I'm out of my lane. We're walking around getting these objectives. Um, maybe we can get some picks here or there. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just trying to break more towers. I'm trying to get more dragons and barons. Late game, waiting for my team to set up fights so that way I could perform and excel at the point that I need to be able to carry these fights. Okay, that's pretty much how it goes. You're being more safe uh, more in the late game than you are early. Of course, being safe is a priority number one. But there's a lot more leniency early because if you die, the game's not over. That is pretty much what we're about here. Um, if you guys, of course, have any questions, feel free to ask. If you guys are curious about the discount on my site, CoachBlaker.com, it is gone. I apologize, but that discount is over. As I said before, we're going to have more uh, guides going on the Patreon. Um, if you guys haven't seen that big news video, please watch it. It's going to explain everything about my schedule on YouTube and my schedule for Patreon. But... The next video for this is going to be the advanced and then the expert. So advanced is going to talk more about matchups. You know, it's going about how we lane and stuff like that. And then the advanced or the expert is going to be me playing a game of AD carry and it, and just kind of explaining how I'm playing, what I'm thinking about, how you play these situations. Pretty much give you a bird's eye view, uh, pretty much what's going on and what is expected as an AD carry. So if those things are something you're interested in, by all means, please subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, but without further ado. We're going to be in this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you. If you guys have any suggestions on how I can make this video better or future videos better, please let me know. I will be t touching other roles as well. I just am going to start with AD carry. Uh, but the next one is probably going to be support. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you. It's a long video. I'm going to have timestamps. If you've already didn't, you're already in, in the video. I probably should say I'm going to have timestamps at the start of the video so that y'all don't have to wait. But uh, I'm sorry. Have a good rest of your day, a night, whenever you're enjoying it. And, and I hope to see you guys next time in the next video. Uh, like I said, a new schedule for everything. So I hope you're along with for the ride. Without further ado, thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach. Mm -hmm.